Grace and peace to you from God our Father. Amen. Well, friends, Christmas Day 2015 is past. It's over, right? It's history. The presents are opened and hopefully being enjoyed while the ripped up wrapping paper is either in the garbage or maybe you burned it in the fireplace. The church services, we had a beautiful candlelight service this year as we do every year. They're finished also. The songs, they're sung. The Christmas dinner is eaten. The dishes are put away. Well, I hope they're put away. The company has gone home. That's, a, that's tough for some people. For others, that's a good thing. <laughs> Perhaps the Christmas tree is taken down already. Christmas Day 2015 is over. Now what? Well, St. Paul asks the same question to the Christians in our epistle reading this morning in Paul's pastoral letter to the Colossians. In the first 11 verses there of chapter 3, Paul lays out the rules for holy living. Now note, Paul is not saying that you must do this and you must not do that in order to be saved. I mean, Paul is the champion of teaching salvation by grace through faith outside of your own works. But in verse 1, Paul says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. So what the apostle is saying is this. Jesus has come and saved you and saved you. Now what? See, our epistle lesson encourages us to know and to live out that change that has taken place, that has been brought about in us by Jesus being with us, by Jesus being our Emmanuel. And it's also a great reminder that after the second coming, we will be made perfect once again in the new creation. And that even today, even now, after the first coming of Jesus, we are made new. Let's open with a brief word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, what a fulfillment of promise you are time and again. That promise that is for us and for all who believe. And so we lift up your name. We glorify the name of Jesus, our Emmanuel. Amen. Therefore, therefore, if you look at verse 12 of your reading, St. Paul gives us one of the most theologically significant, one of the most theologically important words in all of Scripture. Therefore, a simple adverb that carries great theological significance and importance for each Christian. I mean, see, just like Christmas is now over for the regenerated Christian, so is the power of sin in your life. Since then you have been raised with Christ, Paul says. You are saved by grace through faith. And so sin has no power, no dominion over you. It's over. Since you are now a saved Christian, you are a regenerated Christian with eternal life. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, now what? Now we live a Christian life with Christian virtues as the guiding principles of our life because we are holy and dearly loved. Verse 12, by God. Friends, if you are holy and dearly loved by God, I mean, that changes everything, doesn't it? What beautiful baptismal language. The implications of this language are sacred and they're eternal. Now that the old life is over, the new life has come. Therefore, in verse 12, Paul lists a number of virtues that belong to Jesus that he has now given to us. He's done it in baptism. He's done it through our faith. Now, this is important. These virtues aren't our own. They aren't, they aren't our own creation. 
They are Jesus's, and he has given them to us. See, it's just as Jesus says in John chapter 17, all I have is yours. Therefore, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Now, friends, the Greek word here, the Greek root word for compassion in our lives is so powerful that, frankly, in the English language, we can't even begin to translate it properly. See, the Greek word for compassion is splachna. Now, splachna is, let's see if I can say this right, is an onomatopoeia. onomatopoeia. It's a word that is formed by the sound that it makes. See, it's just like the English word that we have, bang. Bang, we use that word for a loud noise because it sounds like the explosion, right? Well, in the Greek, the Greek word splachna means from the bowels or very deep within yourself, the heart of yourself, meaning it's, it comes from your very core. Now, if you're wondering why this word, splachna, well, I mean, the definition's kind of gross, but it was derived from the sound made during the butchering process when the innards of the animal would fall on the ground. Splat. I know it's gross, and yet it's powerful. It's so powerful that Paul uses this word to describe exactly where our Christian compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience should come from. It should come from the very deepest core of yourself. And that's the therefore of Christian charity and love. Now, can you do it alone? I guess it's possible, but it isn't easy. Verse 13 tells us, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive, forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's more beautiful baptismal language. See, you are forgiven because of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. You are forgiven because just as Simeon proclaimed, Jesus has fulfilled the law. Jesus is the, the promised fulfillment. And so you can forgive because Jesus has first forgiven you. In fact, it is Jesus' very own forgiveness that was showered over you in baptism that you can now use and, and share with others. Therefore, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. See, this is agape love that Paul is talking about here. Again, the English language has restrictions there. There are four words for love in Scripture. Agape love is a selfless, all-giving love that comes from your splachna, from your deepest, most innermost being. Agape love is so important in the Christian life because it binds all these virtues together. Think of it as the belt that we wear, the belt given to us by God that, that fastens together all the other clothes, all the other Christian virtues that we put on. Since love is the summation and the essence of Christian virtue. All the other virtues of the Christian life. Paul lists them in Romans 13, verse 9. He says, are summed up by this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. Friends, the Christian peace that Paul reflects here in his words is the idea of shalom, 
that we find in the Hebrew Old Testament. See, peace. Shalom, by its very essence, is a relational word. To have peace with God is to have a relationship with him that is based, again, on this forgiveness of sins. This peace with God comes to us only through faith. And through this same faith, we all become members of God's body. See, it's one body. It's the body of believers. Peace that is missing in the body of believers is like cancer. It's invasive. It's disruptive. It's dangerous. It's deadly. Therefore, therefore with Christ's peace, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another. You see, because we have peace through faith in Jesus Christ, in Christian fellowship and sanctification, we help each other to live this new Christian life. Never ever judging, but teaching and admonishing one another with all wisdom. And friends, we are to do it with gratitude in our hearts to God. By the way, another Greek lesson here for you. The Greek word for gratitude is the same root word for grace. Therefore, as believers saved by grace, living in peace and harmony together as the body of Christ, we forgive each other. We teach each other. We admonish each other in everything. Whatever, ever you may do. And as Paul says, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. By the way, here the word for thanks is that same root word again for grace. In grace, Jesus' saving work enables us to do all that we do in His name. Therefore, Therefore, holy does as holy is in grace. It is not the case that one does something holy or good or righteous in order to become holy or good or righteous. That's putting the cart before the horse. Rather, one who is holy through faith in Jesus Christ does what is holy. When one is righteous through faith in Jesus Christ, he does what is good and righteous. Holy does as holy is. Therefore, we live the Christian life together today in the new year and always. Believe it. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And Dom, let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel, the one who makes us holy through his body and blood, Lord, we lift up your name. We glorify the name of Jesus, giving thanks to you in all that we do, remembering that, the, that we are seen only through your righteousness as righteous and holy before the Father. And so we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we pray now in your name. Amen. Now may the true faith which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.